Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. So what you doing today, Jeff? Uh, I think I'm going to go, uh, since people like my <laughs> concepts of it so much, go work on the stairs on the on the roof. Okay. Okay. It looks good. I mean. Yeah, so that's a lot of people are saying how good it looks. Yeah. I, I was yeah. doing it so I kind of well. want to get you to come over and uh, make my roof in my house. Real life. I mean, we could redo the barn roof to make it match. It's mm, closer. Mm, mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> You'll take that into consideration. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll think about that. Uh, um, have you seen the Tesla roofs? The Tesla roofs? Yes. I don't think so. So they've made these solar tiles? <laughs> when I say I don't think so, it means no, but <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to figure out what a Tesla roof would be. So they've made these tiles uh, that are solar. Like, they look like normal uh, shingles, like just a you know a black shingle you would see on a house. But they're actually solar panels that look okay. exactly like a shingle. So you re you re shingle your house with these solar shingles, uh, and then you set up with the Tesla batteries, and like yeah, your whole house is solar powered now. Um, but you can't so, even tell. So I've been watching a lot of videos on solar and DIY solar, and I don't mean DIY as hmm. oh the the little homemade kits. I have been watching some of the like the little homemade like harbor freight diy kits the small panel setups that you have little stands that you can set up in your yard but i just mean how to do put solar on your roof and like with the 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 same kits and stuff that you would buy from a, a major solar company that does this stuff but you can buy all the pieces yourself and do it for a lot cheaper for the installation if you're like purchasing outright if you know what you're doing and yeah. i was re- really interested in it so i watched a lot of videos on it because i think it'd be like a cool thing to do I uh, have you ever thought about getting solar? I have. When I bought my office building, um, that was actually one of my big plans because where it's at, there's no trees or anything that would obstruct the uh, the sunlight, and uh, that was one of the things I had like totally planned to do um, when I moved the office up there was to try to make it solar pa- solar powered, um, just because of its location and whatnot. I was kind of hoping that the Tesla batteries would improve before I did that though, because. Uh, just the lifespan and the capacity and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I mean, that seems the way to go as far as if you're going to store the power and not just run off of it during the day um, so that you can run off it at night as well, uh, which a lot of companies seem to do yeah. because, like, if you if you work in a city or whatever, uh, the power cost is different based on the time of day. Um, so they try, right. to, try to, you know, store power and use it at certain times and whatnot. Um, so well, you're tearing this all down. I'm just, uh, I was so good, I wanted to do it again. Okay. Huh. You'll see this beauty when it's all done, don't okay. you worry. It'll You'll know it when you see it. A feat uh, of majesty. Or but where you live, I don't think that solar's a good option, is it? Uh, they did. They have a lot of, so that, and that's where I'm, most of the videos I watch are people based in California. Because I guess California is one of the best places to get, you know, right. solar based on their, you know, the sunlight, the time of day, all that fun stuff. <sighs> there are DC solar companies in this area that you can do. There's two different weird things out here. One is you can, you're apparently there's this new regulation where you can tell the the solar company or the power company that you want them to only source all your energy from renewable energy sources such as solar, and you still pay the power company. But they have to switch the way they get it. And I don't understand that option at all. It almost like, it sounds like one of those things where they used to call me all the time. And I had a lot of friends that were young that um, when we were younger that fell for this stuff. And it was the, they call you up and be like, we can save you on your energy bill. You uh, cut your contract with this place, you know, Consumers Energy or whatever it was in Michigan. You cut your contract with Consumers Energy. We will be the ones providing you power. Now, if you sign up for this contract and it's a, uh, you know, it's a variable rates, but right now it's at this blah, 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 low rate. And of course they always ended up paying way more and they're like second month and on because of it. But you sold your rights to have like the consumer energy power. 
Huh. It was a very weird concept. And that's kind of what that sounds like to me, but I, I don't quite get it. But then there's also these companies that you can call and they will either for free, they will deck you out with solar, but you don't own the panels. They still own all the hardware and the equipment and stuff. And any excess power that gets generated goes to, they get the money off of it that goes to the grid. Yeah. Or you can buy your own panel. You can do the thing where you buy all the stuff from them and they'll come install it, but you own everything and all the excess power is like yours and you get that money if you wanted to go for that long-term investment. Because the return on investment on those is about, they say between five and ten years, depending on where you live and your power usage and all that stuff. Right. And your, how big your system is, of course, you know, what, you, what you're spending on it. But So I've always, I've always looked at those things and wondered, like, there's a lot of companies in D.C. area that do it, but it's funny because what I've read is that we're not one of the good areas to do this in. So I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it, it just, you know, just having gone there and seen where you live, I don't feel like you get enough sun to make it make sense. Like, even on yeah. my own home, I don't think that I would, but mainly because I have so many pine trees around. Um, but at the same time, if you have a big enough battery setup and a big enough solar setup, you're going to. You you could make it so you could get enough power to store the energy to be able to be used during the batteries at night or whatever, right? I mean, I don't. I mean, if you're not getting enough sun, then you're not getting enough sun. But if you just get more solar panels, if you're not getting enough sun, you're not getting enough sun, Jeff. But <laughs> That's the law. More, more solar panels. <laughs> I don't know what about these words you don't understand, <laughs> right? Let me let me tell you about more solar panels. Uh, yeah, no, I mean I don't. Yeah, if you're not getting enough sun, it doesn't matter, right? Because you need. I mean, you can only you can only store power that you get. If you're not getting the power, you can't store it. But you'd be getting more power if you had more solar panels, right? Like but I mean, thing. there's only there's so always... much. There's, your roof only has so so big of a footprint. So right, that would be your limiting factor. Would at that point be surface area. Right. It's it's not necessarily you, you could literally get more solar powers to cover your need because you live in a different part of the country. Pending you had enough square footage to put them up in. I might have to have three times more solar panels than a, a typical house in uh uh or for my power requirements it, than somebody living in California. But theoretically if I had enough square footage to put the solar panels up i could get i could generate the same amount of power yeah if you have the room just with more it. panels sure yeah. i mean that was my point whether it's cost effective or not i'm not i'm not saying that i'm just saying that you could generate the power if you need it with more solar panels <laughs> uh sure yeah i won't argue with that but yeah i don't think that that doesn't doesn't mean anything if you don't if you don't have <laughs> enough room there's, there's a limit there's limiting factors i guess is what i'm trying to say yes there's, there's definitely limiting factors but i still want to look into it out here because you know, even say it's a 10-year return on investment is that's not necessarily a bad investment to make if i drop 25 grand now but in 10 years from now i'm all of a sudden at a break-even point where i'm just creating money Pending these things last like this, and that's what scares me about this stuff. The solar panel itself, I'm not as worried about lasting for the the longevity. I'm worried about the batteries. Well, yeah, there is. I mean, ten years is probably. Yeah, you're probably not going to get that out of the battery. And yeah, that's that's what I was trying to do more research in and know how long these batteries uh, would last and would work. I would I would love to get into it to experiment with one of those like little Harbor Freight. Uh, I don't know if you've seen. Do you have a Harbor Freight around you? What the hell is that? Harbor Freight's just like a Harbor store. We don't actually have Harbor Freights out here, but I've seen a lot of Harbor Freight ads and Harbor Freight deals. It's one of those. It's like take a Lowe's and Home Depot, and I guess even make it cheaper. And that's what Harbor Freight is. It's like the, it sounds it's like, like you're saying Costco. Harbor Freight, and that's Harbor Har Freight. Correct. Harbor, like like Harbor, a, like a place where boats go. Correct. Oh, okay. So you are saying Harbor Freight? Yeah. One of the times you Har said it sounded like Hardware Freight, and then no, it it's Har Harbor Freight. So it's like straight from the boat to you. Uh, maybe. That sounds maybe. like, based on the name, that sounds like the, what the premise is supposed to be. I mean, it could be. That could be the premise. I don't know. But they have these uh, these solar panel kits. I think they're like 100 bucks, and they come with like four solar panels, four 30-watt solar panels or something like that, and uh, a starter. I think the only thing that doesn't come with is a battery, so if you buy the battery that's supposed to go with it, you end up dropping like 150 bucks, and you have like a small solar kit. And there's a lot of 
YouTube videos where people are trying to determine how many of these kits, how do I need to hook them up? How can I make this run a wall air conditioning unit? It's like what the basis of a lot of these kits is because that's what a lot of, takes a lot of power in some of these places. It's we're trying to run air conditioning, you know, units. So they're mm -hmm. seeing, can I be off the grid with my AC with one of these kits or not? So it's really interesting to watch some of these like builds that people do to try to get this stuff going. But I would buy one of those little kits to play with and experiment with and just even something to charge up power tools or, uh, you know, some something that I have running at a regular a basis. Uh, I, I use a decent amount of power tools. Really? Yeah, just do fixing stuff around the house and... <laughs> breaking breaking dishwashers? Breaking dishwashers <laughs> and you know, all that stuff. Yeah, you definitely use power tools for, for things like that. Um, oh, by the way, it's done. Roof's fixed. Oh. I'm down here killing skeletons. It was, it was just a couple boards out of place. Oh, okay. Good. I made us both a set of diamond armor. I don't know if you needed a full set, but I made you a full set. No, I need a chance on it though. I do have thirty-one levels. Check. I should do. You. See, that's, I can, yeah, I kept dying, so I didn't, I didn't right get now. to leave with the most levels. I'm trying to get up to thirty now, so I can enchant this armor I just made us. But why were we talking about Tesla? Oh, the roof. Oh, the roof. Yeah, you started talking about so, roofs, and it reminded me. Of so, but let me ask you this: Is, is there a big problem? Like, does anybody currently look at a roof that has solar panels on it and go, oh, my God, that's ugly. I don't want anything to do with that roof. Uh, does, yeah. does there more have a stigma where it's like, oh, that person invested in solar? No. Well, why would You'll that have a stigma? So. Why is, who, who's like, oh, that, ew, that person invested in solar? Well, and th that's my point. I guess I said it wrong, but that is my point. Nobody's looking at a roof that's decked out with solar panels and thinking it's a bad thing. So do I need... To spend the well, money to get my shingles that l are solar panels instead? Well, supposedly, it's also cheaper than the average solar panel setup. Oh, that's an interesting And one. it's, like, more that's efficient that's... because it covers the entire roof. It's not, like, these, these solar cells. Um, so, I don't know. Supposedly, it's better in all ways. And it looks better. How are they wired up? Uh, you know. <laughs> oh, okay. I think there's a grid under the shingles that the gr that each shingle snaps into, so to speak. You know what I mean by that? Uh, yeah, I think I I know the concept that you're you're getting at here. I mean, that's it. Sounds kind of cool. I'd be curious to know how much it actually is because. <sighs> yeah, I saw someone on Reddit recently that had done it, and they said they spent fifty thousand, I think, but I don't know how big their house was. Me, me I get Google a protection. It. I get a protection three book right now, or a prote oh, I can put protection four on my pants. Do you have a? Uh, where are you at with those brand new pants? I'm Let's in see the, the, I'm in the sky sky for. So I'm gonna come over and grab. Cause my pants are like halfway dead, and I'd rather put prop four on brand new pants if it's the same. And Chan will give me. Yeah, the first the first customer. This was oh, I guess what I saw on Reddit. That was just April second. So this is just this is still kind of new. Fifty grand for an entire roof. But yeah, I guess depending on how big it is. It's a, yeah, it sounds like a lot of money, but it's probably money that might be worth it in the long run. Though if it's their first customer, God, I, I just wonder the longevity of these things. Like they're not proven out yet. Are they going to last five years and need to get replaced? Yeah. You got some pants for me. Yes. Here, I'll just give you your whole set. In case you want to replace anything you got or repair. I don't know, I don't know why you made chest plates. Well, because we're going to fight the weather, and you're going to take your lighter off when we do that. Uh, yeah, I guess. Unless I want to fly away mm -hmm. with fireworks. I mean, yeah. Probably should do it, like, in between. <laughs> fly away in between. Throw on the Elytra, fly away, take it off, drop, kick from the top with uh, four chest blades. Yeah, the, and then, then the storage, like what I would deal with out here is store all those, the batteries and stuff that you need to have a really good setup. Yeah. Because I just don't have that much room out here and so this person installed the roof and three power walls, which is the battery. How, how many batteries in the power wall? 
I think it's just a big ass battery. One battery? Yes, it's big. It's a Tesla battery. There's a problem book in here already. If I remember right. Do you have any respiration on your helmet? Uh, I mean, I just made this new armor. I have nothing on nothing. Because I, I have the ability right now to get... Oh, I need to get two more levels, but then I can get a respiration two book. Hmm. And I'm trying to see if we have one already. It does not look like it. I have respiration three on my helmet, so I don't need it. But I don't know if I see respiration come up all that often. The cool thing is, it comes with a mobile app, even that shows what's happening at your on your power. Yeah, I think a lot of the uh, a lot of the systems do that. All the the DIY systems. You should really watch some YouTube videos on DIY solar installs. They're really uh, informative and. She tweeted a picture where the her roof was generating 6.2 kilowatts of energy and 5.8 of it was being sold to the grid. That's a lot. Yeah, it is. Uh, one of the things that they said on there is before you ever endeavor into uh, the solar realm, you have to make sure you get the new meter from your company because apparently the current meters that most people have are all they read is that there's power passing through them or energy passing through them. And if you don't get a new one because you don't tell the company that you have your, uh, solar power and you're going to have excess power coming in that needs to go back to the grid, they just charge whatever goes through the meter as as energy and power you're getting from the power company. Uh -huh. So one of the guys was saying that he put up his solar before because he wanted to kind of proof of concept first and he ended up owing money for the solar he generated wow. because he didn't have them give him the, the, right. the new meter. So the cost is... Approximately twenty-one dollars and eighty-five cents per square foot of roof. And what's the standard shingle? Like a buck. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's definitely gonna be more than a than a shingle. But, but I wonder what the square footage of a roof costs for a like if you just set a traditional solar panel. Right. I don't know. <laughs> Obviously. I mean, it'd be really interesting to see the whole Tesla power wall with the Tesla roofs charging the Tesla vehicle. Right. I mean, yeah, that's kind of the future, right? That's the the goal here, I think. I mean, you're right. I think that is the goal. Um, people wonder if that's really going to happen. There's a lot of people naysayers. Elon Musk is going to succeed. I mean, SpaceX. If you just look at just just SpaceX, he seems to be doing pretty well. Yeah, but. Then there's the, all the people dropping the pre-orders for their Teslas, and I dropped mine, but that wasn't because of anything they did. So oh, yeah, I'm, they, I mean, I'm part of that statistic, I suppose. How how long behind the ship dates are they now? Uh, mine was going to come out soon, actually, from when I pre-ordered, but I guess I pre-ordered over a year ago, um, and they gave me my thousand dollars back, so it wasn't it wasn't a difficult process or anything. Yeah, I heard that they were super delayed, and that was one of the reasons that people. No, were... they told me I would get mine by August. Um, but that's when you pre-ordered, right? No, that was like last update because they were updating me and stuff. Uh -oh. um, so unless I mean, it's possible that that changed, I, I guess. Um, but last I'd heard it, I was expecting it in August. How many levels are you at? Twenty-six. All right, I'm like twenty-eight. So I'll wait for you to get done. And I'll come get some more. Making the best YouTube content right here. Hmm. <laughs> so uh, I was talking to you before we started about the the new Nintendo Lab Labo. Um, Labo. The Labo. Um, Labo. A lot of people don't realize it's uh, is French after the um, after they had the after France got together with the the Global Climate Change Summit. Um, they had so many engineers there. Nintendo was there, you know, for just just to show their support and all those engineers there they got them together and asked them to work on something for nintendo and so that's why it's got the french name uh but <clears throat> if you haven't seen it it's really cool it's like uh this cardboard thing that you build out this cardboard and it interacts with your nintendo switch um so I bought it. i'm assuming it's just based on motion sensor some of control, it is right? 
Um, but so like the piano, so built the piano because that's what my daughter wanted first out of everything. Which I was surprised because like, there, there's two kits that are available now. There's the variety kit, which comes with like eight different things. And then there's the robot, which is standalone, which you basically become a fucking mech. Um, which is really cool. I haven't built the robot, but I've looked at like people playing it and it just looks really cool. So at some point I'll get to play it. Because uh, I have it, I just haven't built it yet. Um, but this is actually an interesting story too. I'll tell you this, the, my, my, my Walmart story in a second uh, for buying the thing. But uh, built the built the piano, and the way the piano works, so you put the Joy-Con, which is the controllers that the Switch use. I know you don't have one, so it may not be familiar what I'm talking about. Um, they like they detach from the side of the Switch, so you put those in the back of the piano, and it's got an infrared sensor that looks into the piano. And on each of the keys and things that you that you interact with with the piano, you you put this, these little pieces of reflective tape on. So like when you press down a key, that's what the infrared sensor is reading is the reflective tape. Um, on, the, on each on each key or whatever. There's also like uh, these um, cogs you can put in the top of it that change um, the frequency of the music, and you can turn those to change it further. Like it's it's pretty fucking wild, honestly. Like how it all works and how it uses this tape to to see what you're pressing and just how well it works too. It's like one of those things where when you look at it, you don't. It's like you you like you're, you're a little bit in the disbelief of how well this is really gonna work once it's all put together, but. I don't know. I've been been pretty blown away with the whole thing. So I'll I'll tell you that just in general, and I said this before we started recording as well, that Nintendo has definitely been the most innovative of the big three game console manufacturers, in my opinion. Um, and just starting with the the Wii and the Wii the Wii Mo Wii Motion controller. Yeah. And it's so funny. I didn't realize. I didn't think about the fact, like, I always wondered why did they go away from that? Like, with the Wii U, and now with the Switch, it doesn't really nearly have as much... It's not based on the Wii Motion Controller anymore. Well, the Joy-Cons actually act a lot like those old Wii, Wii, Wii remotes. Oh, do they? Yeah, like, the, um, the Just Dance games, for example, that's all it's using. It's not using... Like, all the other Just Dance games use some kind of camera to see what you're doing, but right. the Wii, it's all about how you move the controllers. But switch, I didn't I mean. realize that after the Wii motion controllers came out and with the enormous success of the original Wii because of that, that that's when PlayStation started coming out with their... Um, they had something they're similar they were trying to come out with, yeah. those little things with the balls on the end or whatever. Right. And they basically failed miserably. Mm -hmm. And then Xbox tried to do something and they kind of failed miserably. And then the Wii U comes out and didn't really utilize much of that stuff anymore like you could still use the original Wii you know motion controller and stuff with them but they didn't really make games tailored for that anymore right. and it was because all of a sudden they, they started talking about that it was it was almost like it was a gimmick that people stopped really liking and I was like wait a minute here that's like what made me think that Nintendo was going to be the greatest console coming back out of this stuff was because of this Crazy innovation with the Wii. I remember when I got my original Wii and how excited I was to finally have scored one at a GameStop because that I mean they were sold out forever. Right. And the fact that they come out with something else like this, I'm like, I'm like, that's amazing. That's great. But is it gonna be one of those things that just falls off the wayside next year as well? Because it's too innovative that nobody wants it. Like I'm so I'm still lost at why the Wii Motion controls like aren't the popular thing anymore right i mean it's i think it's hard to say with this i think it really depends on how people give it a chance i know that for me it very much reminded me of cause me and my daughter spilled a, a lot of lego blocks like we do a lot of lego sets and you know she enjoys playing with them but it's not the same i bought her this thing called a cubato uh last year it was through a kickstarter um and it's been really successful like since then but uh, i think i told you about it. it's a little little wooden box uh um and you can you have a, a a wooden controller that you put you can program it like forward forward left right there's also a function set it's like, where you can like create the old functions. turtle you're talking about right. right it's basically a turtle yeah but there's also a function section so you can put a function and then you put the function key up in the command part so it'll just execute that function once it gets to that point um they did another kickstarter earlier this year where they released like a ton more maps and stuff so i uh, got all that for christmas um but she, I mean, she's she's basically learning programming through this little wooden turtle sort of thing. Um, 
And she got selected to school uh, for like they do these advanced classes for first through third grade, um, where they pick one kid from each class to, to to be a part of this. And she got selected. And so I talked to the school about it, and uh, they don't have any of this Cubato stuff, but they'd heard about it and they were interested. So I've I've been bringing that up there to the school as well for them to check out and use in this in this secondary classroom um, to teach the kids programming basically. Uh, but this Nintendo thing, it like when you know it comes with all these cardboard things you can build. But it also says when you do this, like like it gives you the functionality to program these things on your own as well. You can go a step further with that and build your own devices. And I really hope. I mean, you know, the the first two they're numbered like ToyCon one and ToyCon two. I hope they continue to add to this line because I feel like they're just getting started with it. And it's not just you know you build this cardboard piano or whatever um you know she spent a while coloring it and decorating it because it's just cardboard you know you can do whatever you want to with it so it wasn't just this this piano she's you know personalized it as well um so yeah i don't know i think it's one of the coolest things i've ever seen done with the gaming system well and, and the interesting thing i find about this is you know what it sounds like it is but it's just like a it, but they have these as well. so it's I, it sounds like an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi. I mean, it kind of it, it has it has some of those aspects, right? I mean, it's this yeah, it's this thing that's doing something. It whoever whoever had this idea is a fucking genius in my mind. Like because they they took a gaming system and turned it into something completely different that I never ever ever would have thought was possible when I first picked this this thing up. Right, I would I would agree with you there, and it, it, but it's it. I guess they're doing it right because they know they have an audience with the Switch, and it takes a lot more to get somebody to switch over to like a Raspberry Pi or something. But you can almost just do that stuff with a Raspberry Pi and be so much more innovative. I don't know. I don't know if that's true. I mean, because this is made like the Joy Cons and stuff have this functionality built in that make this all possible. I think it would be different. Oh, you're right. You, oh, you're right. If they, the motion stuff, I guess, is right, is kind of big, right? Yeah, so it's definitely a big part of it. Um, yeah, yeah. So I don't think this is something that. I mean, yeah, you could you could program this stuff. I'm sure that there's add-ons for the Pi. I mean, I've done some stuff with like Lego Technic using a Raspberry Pi to expand what the little leg Lego Technic thing could do, um, but it's still you know it's still limited. Um, I think I told you about some best stuff I did, but I never told you in the world about it, so I'm not gonna talk about it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think I think it's really cool. Like I w- I would recommend anyone to buy a Switch how, and this thing. How durable? Is this stuff? The cardboard's and how much does really it cost? thick. It's really thick. So the car, the the variety set was sixty nine ninety nine, um, and that comes with like seven different things: a piano, a race car, a house, a RC car, um, a fishing game. I, I think there was seven different things. I, I'm probably forgetting some of them. I've only done the art, the racing game and the piano at this point because we're doing it together. Um, and then the robot is its own standalone thing. <laughs> Your daughter gets there. You have everything all built. Well, up honestly, there. whatever she was leaving the other day, she was like, can you just go ahead and build these while I'm gone? I mean, she she enjoyed building it and stuff, but at, at the same time, she just wanted to play because the piano took four hours for us to put together. Um, it was not a – I mean, the instructions are fantastic. Like, it's all built into the game. You put the game in and you, the, you, know, you can move the the image around and stuff zoom in zoom out all that sort of thing um and the instructions are very very well done uh but it is very time consuming to fold all of this cardboard but the, granted the piano is also the biggest thing in the whole variety set i imagine the robot because it's its own box and it was 79.99 i imagine the robot will probably take more than four hours to put together um with that the robot itself was 79.99 yes yeah that one's standalone so, that one's standalone the rest of them all came together right Okay, but I do think it looks the coolest. Once you build it once, how long do you think? Like the piano, I guess you're not putting too much wear and tear on. But I saw one of them in that commercial was like a foot pedal. How long do you think a foot pedal is gonna last? Yeah, you know, I have questioned this. How long are these things gonna stay together? Like I said, it's it's not just thin cardboard; it's very thick. But yeah, I mean, it's it's only gonna last so long for sure. If something on it broke, can you replace it with a cardboard box and cut it to the same shape? Or is it special? No, you could totally do that. So it's not like it's special sensor built into the Mm -hmm. cardboard. No. All the sensor stuff is the little tape, little pieces of tape. 
So, so that makes me kind of wonder, like, now what I'm excited to see is what do people make themselves. Right. And then the question comes, and this is where a Raspberry Pi thing comes into play, is am I allowed to sell a product right. that I make that's different than something they have, or does Nintendo own all rights to even selling anything that is supposed to play with the system? I mean, I feel like you could... I mean, that's, a, that's an interesting question. I don't know if you can now put this thing on eBay, like, I've made this design, here's a PDF to build it yourself sort of thing. Um, I just mean even if you made them yourself and sold them. Mm -hmm. Like, this is the outer shell that goes with your... Right, you it's know. already put together, you just buy it and... Because, I mean, right. they... Or even, they... even if I just got into a company that I did the design of the cardboard sheets just like Nintendo does for not for what they're selling already, but for the products that I now invented, like that's different than something that Nintendo right. currently sells. That's a good Can question. Can I sell that or is that illegal? Um, I'm going to Google that and see if there's actually a, someone talking about it. Because a lot of people do make like their, their livelihood off of add-ons and stuff and uh, things that are, you know, this is meant to go work with a Raspberry Pi. Um, this is my like little project. I think one of them's uh, one of the big ones is like a, a little race car type setup, and like they give you all the points, the pieces to it, the coding that they wrote, and it's just like you you can buy the kits. They include a pie, but it's like you insert pie here, put this code on it, and now you have this fully functional like RC car or whatever, right? Because they've done the other outside work. Um, hold on. Because if Nintendo was smart, what they would do is make a little like licensing store, let people sell that shit, but they get a cut of it if they do it through the official Nintendo license store, and they don't even design shit anymore. They just get shit. I mean, when you think about what Nintendo did on YouTube, as far as the only way you could put out Nintendo videos that they're trying to claim copyright on it was if you were partnered with Nintendo and all that, it makes me think that they wouldn't be too cool with you making your own stuff for this and selling it. I would agree that they probably would not be. So probably not. <laughs> I don't know where the law lies in all this, though. It's an interesting question. Because they do totally, like, push you in that direction of, all right, now that you've built this thing, don't throw away the little scraps of, of, um, of uh, reflective tape that we've given you because you could use them to make your own thing and stuff like that. That's what they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like whenever, whenever you, whenever I finished the piano, the one of the last steps was like, um, there's still some, you know, like on the outside of where the reflective, um, the reflective stickers were at is like the like the rim of the sheet is more reflective sticker, and it's like don't be sure not to throw it away. You might want to make your own and program program your own uh, things for for this and keep that that tape. You might need it basically. So they, I mean, they have that in mind, and the functionality is built into the software for you to program and create your own things. Um, so they are assuming people are going to do that, um, but whether I, I don't know if they thought about the fact that people are then going to want to mass produce it and sell it for other people to use. Yeah, my gut is saying that they're going to be like, <laughs> no, right? But I mean. <sighs> I'm really curious. I'm really curious. Huh? I'm curious if anyone else bought one and what they thought about it. I don't. I don't, I don't know how I would feel about the whole thing if I what if I didn't have a kid. Um, I don't think the piano would have appealed to me you, as much as it did. You would have bought it anyway. I would have bought it. Yes, especially the robot. I think the robot's going to be badass. I mean, you're basically a mech warrior um, through a city busting shit up. So I'm all. I'm all about that. Um, the piano, I, just don't, I don't think the piano would have appealed to me as much as it did her. But the racing thing is cool, and I think the fishing thing is going to be cool just from looking at it. So, yeah. Well, the nice thing is, once your daughter gets bored with the actual building of them, which sounds like she already is, so maybe one more session, she doesn't want anything more to do with building. You have Twitch streams of building. I've considered doing that. I've been building uh, Ghostbusters. Um, I bought this 5,000 piece Lego set, and I've been doing Twitch streams of building that thing. Um, which is taking forever. People seem to be enjoying that. So I did consider switching up one of those streams and just building cardboard. Uh, so I might end up doing that, honestly. But yeah, I, I mean, it's. I think I did, well, for one of our Secret Santa here, uh, my gift was a fire truck, um, a Lego fire truck. So uh, it didn't even take long. 
and I Twitch streamed the building of it. And I don't, you know, my, my Twitch streams, do, when I do them, even when I'm gaming, I don't get that many viewers on them. Um, my fire department videos are actually doing okay. Uh, but the I did that one. I think I had like 110 people watching me wow. build this fire. <laughs> like, it was just it was strange. It was right. off the wall. Normally I get like 30 or less. It was yeah. 110 people watching me build a huh. Lego fire truck. Yeah, yeah, my Lego has been doing better than my average stream. I just thought it was just a fluke, but maybe maybe people have this weird thing for Lego building Fetish. Lego. Yeah, um, I'm locked out here, uh, but yeah, we're at time. So hope you all have enjoyed. Uh, all right, guys, <laughs> thanks for watching. See ya.